In this video, we're going to go over genes, genotype, and phenotype. Genes are the basic unit of heredity. In order for an organism to pass on its traits to its offspring, it has to pass on its genes to its offspring. As you recall in our last video, we discussed how DNA is the genetic material in cells. So genes is essentially referring to DNA sequences. Specifically, genes are DNA sequences that code for a functional molecule. This can include proteins or RNA molecules. Within the genome, genes represent a really small percentage of the DNA, only about 1% in most organisms. These DNA sequences and genes can code for mRNA molecules that will code for proteins or non-coding RNAs that do not code for proteins, but these non-coding RNAs still have important functions in cells. For example, tRNAs are an example of non-coding RNAs. Now, if coding sequences represent only 1% of the genome, that means 99% of the genome is non-coding DNA. In the past, this non-coding DNA was thought to have no function in cellular processes. However, that has been recognized to be incorrect. And a lot of these non-coding regions of DNA have roles in regulating gene expression. And right now, active studies are looking more into these non-coding regions of DNA. Okay, so on the topic of genes, you'll occasionally see this term locus. Locus is referring to the position of a gene on a chromosome. So for example, the locus of the P53 gene is on region 13 on the long arm of chromosome 17. So essentially you can think of the locus as the address or position of a gene on a chromosome. Okay, so next let's look at phenotype as well as genotype. So first of all, we can talk about alleles. Alleles are the different variant forms of a gene. For example, we can consider some of Mendel's studies where he was looking at the shape of peas, that they could be round or wrinkled. This is because there are two alleles for the shape of a pea seed, which is big R or little r. Big R referring to the round shape and little r referring to the wrinkled shape. Genotype refers to the set of alleles in an organism. So we know for organisms, they will have two copies of each gene. And one copy they will inherit from the mother, and one copy they will inherit from the father. So when you're looking at the set of alleles, in this example of the P shape, then you could be either big R, big R, big R, little r, or little r, little r. So essentially, genotype is referring to the set of alleles for a particular gene in an organism. The phenotype is looking at the observed characteristics in an organism. So this is looking at the P shape, whether it is round or wrinkled. And you might recall that both big R, big R, and big R, little r have round P shapes, and little r, little r has a wrinkled shape. We can then talk about homozygotes and heterozygotes. These are referring to the two different alleles and whether they match or not. So homozygotes are organisms with two identical alleles. This could be, for example, big R, big R, or little r, little r. Heterozygotes are organisms with two different alleles for a gene. So that could be big R, little r. When you're looking at homozygotes, the phenotype is fairly straightforward because you have two of the same alleles. So the phenotype will just be whatever alleles that organism has. So big R, big R individuals will have round shapes, whereas little r, little r individuals will have wrinkled shapes. In heterozygotes, it's a little bit more complicated, and this is where we can talk about dominance and recessiveness. So the dominant allele is the allele that determines the phenotype in heterozygotes. So when you look at a big R, little r organism, you can look at its shape. 
And since the big R, little r shape is round, that means big R is the dominant allele. And again, the dominant allele is the one that determines the phenotype in heterozygotes. The recessive allele, on the other hand, is the allele that is masked by the dominant allele in heterozygotes, meaning that the only instance where the recessive allele is going to determine the phenotype is in homozygous recessive individuals. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about is another term that you will see on the MCAT, which is wild type. Wild type is referring to the normal phenotype found in nature. So wild type you can just think of as the normal organism. And then you can contrast this with mutants, which are different from the wild type. So for example, we can consider wild type Arch plus bacteria. The plus is usually used to indicate the wild type allele. So that means Arch plus bacteria, they're normal and they can synthesize their own arginine amino acids. We can then consider mutant Arch minus bacteria. The Arch minus bacteria is a mutant indicated by the minus, and these bacteria cannot synthesize their own arginine amino acids, meaning that these mutants cannot survive and grow unless they are given arginine supplements.